folks. This is Pastor Jason. Welcome to The Connection. Hope you're having a blessed, blessed day. Excited to be with you. Got a word from the Lord for you. Um, the Lord is awesome. Of course, we know this. Believers in God know how awesome the Lord is. And the Bible is full of things that sometimes if we'll just take time to read them and ask the Holy Spirit to say, Lord, when I'm reading your word, just bring things to my attention. God will bring some amazing things to your attention. The Spirit, you know, Jesus talked about to his disciples that when he left, the Holy Ghost would come and he said he would reveal everything that I taught you. I mean, that's why you see such a transformation of the, the disciples um, on the day of Pentecost after the outpouring of the Holy Ghost because all of a sudden, all these things that Jesus taught them for three and a half years I mean, just came bursting to the surface of their mind and their spirit. And man, they were on fire. I mean, just the fire of the Holy Ghost, the fire and the passion of God, excited about the Word of God, revelation coming to them. So we, I want to bring a little bit of revelation tonight. Um, and, you know, this, to me, revelation is life-changing. When you talk about revelation, it always has the ability to, to, to bring life, to bring uh, clarity into situations. So, so I think that, you know, sometimes to understand how God thinks and how God feels. And I know some people will say, well, you know, God is so big and massive and the Bible says his thoughts are not his thoughts, his ways are not our ways. And that is so absolutely true. But yet that does not make God so distant. That does not make God unapproachable. That does not make it to where that we can't know anything about him. I mean, there's so many things in the word that reveal to us the power and the, the personality of God. I mean, we talk a lot about the power of God and, you know, we need the power of God, but let's talk about the personality of God. I mean, this is, is phenomenal. It's amazing. And I love it. And I come across this this week, of course, the Holy Spirit just directing my attention to the scripture to share with you. It's in Judges chapter 10, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 16, and um, I'm going to read it quickly through the NASB Bible. I'm going to read it through pretty quick. Uh, and there's a couple of things we're going to highlight through this, but there's going to be one scripture that we really want to talk about. So Judges chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Now, after Abimelech died, Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Issachar, arose to save Israel, and he lived in Shamir in the hill country of Ephraim. He judged Israel 23 years, and then he died and was buried in Shamir. After him, Jared the Gileadite arose and judged Israel for 22 years. He had 30 sons who rode on 30 donkeys, and they had 30 cities in the land of Gilead. They are called Havoth Jair to this day. And Jair died and was buried in Camon. Then the sons of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord, served the Baals and the Astros, the god of Aaron, the god of Sidon, the god of Moab, and the gods of the sons of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve him. The anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of the Philistines and into the hands of the sons of Ammon. They afflicted and crushed the sons of Israel that year. For 18 years, they afflicted all the sons of Israel who were beyond the Jordan in Gilead in the land of the Amorites. The sons of Ammon crossed the Jordan to fight also against Judah, Benjamin, and the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was greatly distressed. Then the sons of Israel cried out to the Lord, saying, We have sinned against you, for indeed we have forsaken our God and served the Baals. The Lord said to the sons of Israel, Did I not deliver you from the Egyptians, the Amorites, the sons of Ammon, and the Philistines? Also when the Sidonians, the Amalekites, and the Moabites oppressed you, you cried out to me, and I delivered you from their hands. Yet you have forsaken me, and served other gods, therefore I will no longer deliver you. Go and cry out to the gods which you have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your distress. The sons of Israel said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do to us whatever seems good to you. Only please deliver us this day. So they put away the foreign gods from among them and served the Lord. And he could no longer bear the misery of Israel no longer. Look at that with me. He could, he could bear the misery of Israel no longer. No longer. I thought that was fascinating. But if you read through the book of Judges, and of course the book of Judges is rightly titled the book of Judges because all throughout that period of time, which was several years, I mean possibly 
uh, I forget the exact total number of years from the time that Joshua died until the time that King Saul was anointed king. But many, 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 many years that Israel seemed to be stuck in some kind of cycle. Like I said, it was rightly called the book of Judges because throughout that period they had judged God, God raised up men and women, Deborah was one of them, uh, being a prophetess to to deliver the people of Israel from their affliction. Now God God would, in order to punish them, and in order to and I guess maybe punish is kind of a uh, kind of the wrong word in this because God, even though He was punishing them, the purpose of Him allowing these other countries to afflict them was to cause them to repent. So any any I guess you can't call uh, God doing things to get us to repent being called punishment. It's called salvation. So during this time. You know that God was, and we'll use the term word punishment just for the sake of the story here. God would punish them repeatedly to get them to turn their heart back to God. And so, so they're stuck in a cycle. And from reading the book of Judges, you can see that being stuck in a cycle can be very dangerous. I mean, there's, you know, cycles are we, we get in this thing, we get stuck, and we come around, we come out of it, then we go back around. You know, you know what a cycle is. And the thing of it is, only God can break a cycle. If you're uh, stuck in a cycle of addiction, if you're stuck in a cycle of anger, or abuse, whatever it may be, whatever it is you're dealing with, you have to understand that your strength alone is not enough to break a cycle. Only God can break the cycle. And so they're stuck in a cycle. They're, they're wrapped up in this cycle of they would serve God. Whenever they had a judge who would deliver them, the, as long as the judge was alive, they would serve God. When the judge would die, they would go back to the ways. Once again, that shows us the importance of needing a pastor in our life. We need a man of God. We need a pastor. We need mentors. As pastors, we need mentors in our life because it seems like when we have accountability and when we have somebody in our life that can stand there and tell us what's right and wrong and lead us as an example, not just tell us, but can show us then we're, we are going to stay connected with God. But if we don't, if we don't have a man of God, if you don't go to church, if you don't have a man of God in your life, then you're going to fall into a cycle of destruction and you're going to serve other gods and say, well, the people don't serve idols today. No, not ones of wooden stone, but there are many idols which people serve. Of course, you, you know what they are in your own. I mean, if you have any, if you're struggling with it, let me say this in your own life, you understand what, what I'm talking about. But the beautiful thing about God is, his mercy is always greater than his anger. And the Bible said that his anger burned against them. And people say, and then it, then it says that his, his soul was grieved or he grieved. You know, people say, well, you know, God is not capable of feeling any kind of negative emotion because he's good. He's all good. He's all joy. He's all happiness. And there's one part of that is right. He is all good. He is all joy. He is all happiness. Every bit of joy, happiness, peace, all those good things come from God. But you can't say that God doesn't have the ability to feel what we feel. The Bible said that Jesus felt our infirmities. He was touched with the feelings of our infirmities. So you can't tell me that God doesn't have the ability to get angry. He doesn't have the ability to, to get grieved. I mean, look, look at what Jesus did when he got coming to the temple. He got angry. I mean, there's... There's so many there's so many proofs of it in scripture to say yes God God has emotions too. And when we do wrong it makes him mad. When we do evil he gets angry about it. Can't say that he doesn't because he does. The Bible is full of the proof of it. So all these commentators that are writing saying God's not capable. No, God's capable of feeling these emotions and he does when we mess up. But yet God is also capable of love. He's capable of pouring out mercy. He is capable that when we sin, even though it may make him angry, that he doesn't just go ping and that's the end of us and we're done. He has the ability through that emotion that he's feeling to look and extend grace and mercy toward us to help us in the time of day. God understands we're human beings and that's not excuses for us to act any way we want to act. But God understands we're human beings in that, you know, at times we're going to slip up, we're going to make mistakes, but his mercy, thank the Lord, is greater than his anger. Jeremiah told us that in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, he said, if it wasn't for the mercies of the Lord, he said, we would be consumed. He said, but his compassion fails not. His anger endures, the Bible said, but a moment. Thank God for that, because where will we be right now if God never relented from his anger? If God never relented from his punishment, which is actually him saving us. 
Chastisement is not God just punishing us just because he thinks it's fun. God chastises us because he loves us. I feel the Holy Ghost talking to you about this because I feel like it's important for us to understand this, that when we think of God, you know, we think of God as a God that has the capability of, of, of getting angry like a father would a child, to, towards a child. That God feels emotions too and that God wants us to be right. He wants our spirit and our heart and our mind to be in a place of righteousness. So does he get angry when we're not? You better believe he does. But Jeremiah told us, he said, it is the mercies of the Lord, he said, that keep us from being consumed. And here's the thing about it. God had every right to punish them. Why? Because they forsook him. They forsook the Lord. And the punishment, the Bible says in this text, which we read Judges chapter 10, lasted for 18 years. And, man, that's a long time. But here's the thing. It took them 18 years to finally say enough's enough. We can't take it anymore. Does that, does, does that just amaze you? I mean, when I, when I, man, you know, there's just things in the Bible when I read it, I'm just like, wow, you guys are really, really stubborn. Man, you guys were hard-headed. Of course, that was that's one of the uh, traits of Israelis. If you look back all the way from biblical history, even to today, they're stubborn and thick-headed. And, and here they were for 18 years. They bore the brunt of this punishment and being, the Bible says, being crushed by the enemy. Man, let me tell you something. I don't want it for one second. I don't want it for one minute. If I'm doing something wrong and God says, you know what, Palmer, I'm going to teach you a lesson, get you back on track. It ain't going to take me long to look and say, I've had enough. I'm sorry. Help me to be right. <laughs> 18 years of it. It's like, wow, but it did have its, it did work. After 18 years of this, they, they, re, they repented. And, and, and here's what they said to the Lord. They said, God, we can't take this anymore. This is too much. We're sorry. We know we messed up. We know we made a mistake. Lord, whatever you got to do, do it. Just deliver us from this. Matter of fact, let me read it to you because I think it's I think it's fascinating. They said to the Lord, we have sinned. Do to us whatever seems good to you. Only please deliver us this day. You know what? It kind of reminds me of what David said in 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 14. The Bible said that um, the Lord saw an occasion against Israel because they were sinning against him. They were starting to get out of hand. He saw an occasion against them, of course, again, to punish them, but yet through the punishment to bring them back to salvation. So he caused David to number the people. Now, that was a sin because David was not supposed to know the number of the fighting men that were available because David would look at, the, of course, you know how many men are. They would look and say, wow, I've got all this army. I can take on any army. When it was very clear that, uh, like we, we preached about last Sunday, uh, this past Sunday about Gideon with 300 men, the Lord said to Gideon, he said, I'm going to reduce your army down to this little number so that Israel can't walk away saying, huh, look what we did. Look, look, what, look, how, much, look how bad we beat this Midianite army. So God basically had the same theory throughout all of Israel's life was, you know what? Don't number the people. You don't need to know how many fighting men you got. All you need to know is when you go out there to battle, I'll be there with you to fight the battle. But the Lord stirred David to do this. And of course, you know, God was ready to punish you for what the people were doing. And this is what the prophet Gad said to him. The Lord said to the prophet Gad, he said, go and say to David, thus says the Lord, I will offer thee three things. Choose one of them that I may do it unto you. So Gad came to David and told him, and he said, shall a son of yours of famine come unto the land? Or will you flee for three months from your enemies while they pursue you? Or will it be three days of pestilence in the land? He said, now advise and see what answer I shall return to him. That sent me, in other words, Gad was going to take the answer back to God. And David said to Gad, he said, I am in a great strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. And let me not fall into the hand of man. In other words, he said, listen, he said, man will not relent. 
and man will not quit. If God, if I say, God, yeah, let three, let, let me fight or armies come against me or people come against me. David said, I know the nature of men. He said, they won't relent. They won't give up. He said, but God has mercy on people. God has great mercy on people. And I thought, man, that is amazing. Why can't, why can't we be more like God? You know, sometimes people get vendettas against other people or people have bitterness in their heart towards somebody else. And, and man, they, if, if somebody has a beef with somebody or someone just doesn't like somebody, man, they will pour it on them. I mean, just, you ever met people who are relentless and stuff like that? I know some people who are like that. It's like no matter, they just feel justified to be just rah, 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 all the time on somebody, on something. But David said, I would rather fall into the hands of God, he said, because I know my God has great mercy. And then the Bible says they repented and said to the Lord, Lord, whatever you see, whatever you think's good, just do it because we need deliverance from this. Man, I, I tell you, that's, that's, that's a desperate plea to say, you know what? This has got to stop. And then there, this is what it says about the Lord. And I, and I want to read this in the King James. It says, and the Lord, he could, he could bear the misery of Israel no longer. It, as we read in our text, it grieved the Lord. And here's, 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 here's the beauty and the love of God. That God loves us so much that he will chastise us. That he will bring, as I said, I use the term punishment, affliction, hardship, even allowing the enemy, if you read the book of Job, allowing the enemy to afflict us. Because he loves us so much that he doesn't want to get saved. And here on the flip side, that while God is letting this punishment happen to us and he's, he is grieved by our misery. If you ever think God's getting a big kick out of doing stuff to you and allowing say he's not. He's not. We have to understand this, that punishment and benefits flow from the love of God. As much as God can punish us, he is ready to pour out benefits just as much or, or if not greater than that. His mercies are so great. His mercies are so wonderful that Jeremiah said in Lamentations 3, he said, it is of the mercies of the Lord we are not consumed because his compassion faileth not. Great is thy faithfulness. The mercies of God, the faithfulness of God, the love of God, punishment and benefits flow from the same love. So you got to understand that when he is punishing you, he's doing it because he loves you. He's doing it because he wants us saved. He's doing it because he doesn't want us to be wrong. He's doing it to keep us where we need to be. Thank you, Lord, for your chastisement. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings of a loving God that loves me enough to say, you know what, Palmer? If you're not listening to me speak to you, then I'm going to let this happen to you to get you back to where you need to be. So you know what the remedy is to stop that? Don't get to that place. Don't forsake God. Don't walk away from the biblical principles that you know work that you know are the truth, that you know are right. Don't walk away from a loving God who loves you so much that he died for your sin. He gave his life. You don't walk away from a loving God that loves you with all of his heart, that grieves when we're miserable. He loves us today. He loves you. And yet, like I always tell people, he believes in you. He wouldn't be doing this stuff if he didn't believe in you. He wouldn't, be, he wouldn't be allowing these things to come against your life if he didn't believe in you and what you could do and what he called you to do. So you know what? Be encouraged today. Even though this may seem like somewhat of a, you know, strong message, you have to look at, you have to look and understand just how awesome God really is. He, he's, he's, he's amazing. He's absolutely amazing. And he loves you so much. He loves you so much. Let's pray together. Father, we love you today. Thank you, Lord, for all those that are watching, Lord, tonight. And, Lord, who will watch this post. And even months from now and maybe even years from now, someone will pull up and 
come across this post, Lord, and they'll find themselves in a place to where they feel like they're being afflicted and punishment and bad things are happening in their life, that they can find this lesson and this study today and they can say, you know what? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn back to God. I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to stop these foolish things, throw these idols out of my life. I don't need these things. They're not important. The most important thing is to live for God. Lord, and I pray that somebody would come across this. Maybe somebody even watching today or tomorrow, whatever it may be, that they'll find themselves in a place of repentance because they can look at you and know that you're not enjoying any of this, Lord, but you love them enough to put them through it so that they will turn their heart back to you. So I pray, God, let them turn their heart back to you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. So God bless you today. Thank you for being part of the connection. If you haven't subscribed to the channel and you like the content that we put on here, please consider subscribing. Become a part of the Foothills Worship Center family. We have our Sunday services on here as well. And I'm sure if you watch it, it'll be a blessing to you. But thank you so much. Until next time, stay connected with God. God bless you.